Well, folks, we've got some unfortunate news. Uh, so after much discussion and deliberation, Alex and I have decided that uh, the best thing is for me not to go down with the crew to Costa Rica. And the reason for that is that we got gummed up a bit with the building inspector and building Arabella's new cathedral here. And by looking at the calendar, you know, we're pretty beat as it is right now. It's been a lot of work to get this done and the weather's been cold and not always cooperating, which makes that even a little bit harder. Um, so when we get back from Costa Rica, we would have two weeks before the planking party starts. And Costa Rica, although fun, and it's going to be great to see what's going on down there and teach the course and everything else, it's not exactly going to be a relaxing, recovering type endeavor. Um, so if Alex and I both go, we're going to come back from that without being really able to recover. And we just have too much work to get done for the planking party. And although we're really sick to go down and help out with everything down there, Arabella and the project really, you know, that has to be our priority. Um, and it made decision of who was going to go down really simple because I don't speak a lick of Spanish and I'm not very good with the cameras. Um, so Alex is going to go down so he can help translate, which is very, very important. And he can go document everything that we did and everything that they're going to do and everything that's going on down there, which is also really important. Uh, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to work with my grandfather and Joe and get that old Chrysler up and running. We're really, really close. They've been working on it a bunch and there's a bunch of shavings in the thickness house in the thicknesser house right now. So it's a little misleading. Uh, we haven't got that up and running yet. We just covered up a bunch of mud that was in there with some shavings. Um, so we really need to get that done and a few things done in Arabella, the last oak plank on and a bit of fairing um, so that we're really able to make the most use of the planking party and we got folks coming in and we really owe it to them and to ourselves to make best use of that and to really get these planks on the boat. So it's been really bummed not to be able to go. I'm going to be here in the cold, <laughs> um, but it's going to be really great to be able to hammer that plank and heart party really hard and get that done and get that done well. And this way we can kind of divide and conquer and do two things really well instead of doing one really well and one probably quite poorly, which is definitely something we don't want to do. So for the last week, Joe, my grandpa, and I have been working like crazy on getting the thickness planer up and running. And a couple people on Instagram and Facebook have commented and wanted to know why we are spending the time and the money getting that thing up and running when we've got the Delta back here, which so far has helped us do all of this. And the reason for that is kind of many folded, but one is that we are slowly killing the Delta. What we're doing is really in the verge of industrial work in a lot of ways. And that Delta, even with the spiral head, was not made for that, where that giant industrial planer is. Uh, another thing is when we do the planking party in a couple weeks, if we've got two guys there running the thickness planer and two here hanging planks and two on the other side hanging planks, there is just not enough room in here to have six people working at the same time. And the other thing is our electrical service is pretty old and is not that great. And if we are to run the Delta and the dust collector, that's about all we can really run. Uh, we can probably run a skill saw alongside that, but not certainly the air compressor to rivet, um, not having a skill saw and a planer going, it really limits us. It's gonna be a lot faster. We've got a little weak here at the water pump. Um, so we got one of those ordered, it's on the way, but there's a grease fitting. So we greased that up and hopefully that'll help stymie that leak a little bit. And we're right now trying to find and see if we have a belt that'll go on the alternator here and up and run the fan. Cause we cannot run this without that hooked up. Um, otherwise we'll just overheat the motor and fry it. So grandpa's looking to see if he's got a belt. If not, we'll run and pick one up and then uh, we'll see about twisting this thing's tail as he puts it and see if we can get it up and running. Clutch in or out? Out. Ready? Yeah.
Perfect. Good job. It works. So what are we thinking here? Or what are you thinking? <laughs> okay. Well, obviously we're going to put the engine here. Yeah. We have to bring the pulley far enough this way so we can put the coupling on here. Yeah. The coupling's probably going to be about this long. Okay. Then we can put the shiv and then a bearing and then out here the other bearing. And then if we get that collector we can put we put a shiv on, shiv on that and the collector up here and it'll yeah. suck all the chips up and out yeah. and by the way i know everyone's gonna ask what'd you do to your hand <laughs> i got a slice yeah. between yeah. my thumb and my finger not a big deal not a big deal Well, we got a goodly bit accomplished today. I am one happy camper. We got it moved over here and uh, sitting roughly in place. We kind of have an idea of the base that we're going to put underneath it. Uh, right now, what we need to do is go tomorrow up to Adams and go check out the dust collector that I found for it and see if that'll work, see if we can pick that up. And Joe's getting the coupling that we need to hook up to the head for the planer and a few other things we already got the shaft he already got the bearings so hopefully we'll go pick some stuff up tomorrow uh, the weather's supposed to be really gross and then we've got a stretch of a few nice but cold days uh, so i'll work on getting the base for this kind of figured out and hopefully uh, we'll get joe over here and do some machining on that shaft and the bearings and get that stuff figured out but i'm really really hoping what's today wednesday that uh by saturday sunday we'll be able to fire up the planer and see if we can go. All in all, super, super happy with where we're at so far. Whew. So yesterday, uh, it was really, really gross out. We got like three inches of snow overnight and then it started to rain, it warmed up. So that three inches of snow is now just, I don't know, maybe an inch of ice. It is nasty. Um, but yesterday, Joe, I drove up and picked Joe up and we went up into the Berkshires and we went and picked up this dust collector unit here that we found off Craigslist. So we paid 200 bucks for it. It was a little more than I wanted to spend really on collection, but it is exactly what we need and uh, we don't have to really do any messing with it. So I think just in time and energy savings, it was worth it. Um, so basically the, the chips will get sucked in here. There's a big aluminum impeller. It'll blow them out here. And we're set up with a shaft and a, and a pulley, which is pretty perfect. Uh, we can throw this above the collector and we can put a motor down here and run it off the electric if we want. Depending on how we get the motor connected to the thickness planer, we might be able to just run this off of that jack shaft and have the uh, old Chrysler flathead run everything, which would be the ideal. We'll see how it goes, but this gives us a lot of options. It'll be really easy to set up and it should be way more than big enough to keep up with that planer. Cause we start shoving 20, 25 inch wide boards of uh, something soft like cedar or pine in there. We're going to generate a lot of chips really, really fast. And we need to make sure that we can move them and not have the collector getting clogged and this beach to do that. Um, so when we got back from that, I worked on the uh, motor a little bit in the mud pit. So let's go take a look at what I got accomplished there. So I got these doors done just in time before the snow came. But yesterday I worked on getting this pulley here off. So I don't know when it was on. It very likely could have been on this motor since 1947 when it was built. Um, but this mounted with the spline here onto the shaft and then that's what had the big pulley on it. It's a twin belt pulley there and that's what originally ran the uh, shingle mill. And Joe's concern is that the RPMs we need to run from the shaft here up here to the planer head, uh, that pulley is going to be way too big. So we're going to have to put a pretty massive pulley up top as well. And that is going to give us a really high rim speed, which we're not really looking to do. We can want to keep that kind of as low as we can. So I wrestled this off yesterday. And basically what that entailed was using these jaws here. 
thank you, I believe, great-grandpa for these. <laughs> Oldies but goodies. Um, so I use that for pulling bearings and all sorts of other stuff, but essentially they hook onto here. This goes against the shaft, and you crank on the end, and that way it isolates all the force right here on the shaft, and it's not transitioning it into the motor. It took me quite a while, several hours, um, but we finally got that wrenched off. So we can finish cleaning up that shaft, and we got a blank slate to put whatever pulley we want to put on there. Joe's going to come over today, and we're going to look at this. Uh, one of the next big things is to get these shafts all lined up and build a really good bed underneath the engine here. Um, so we're going to start just moving these things around, putting the level on them, jacking them up, shimming them, and seeing if we can get this into a good spot. Highs in the 20s. Uh, definitely not a warm one, so I am mildly envious of uh, Alex and the crew down there in Costa Rica right now. They say that it's super hot and they're just, you know, pouring sweat down there and I'm up here freezing. I think we need something in the middle. Wow, oh, that actually is not bad. I do not think we are going to be so lucky this way. Oh, not bad. So we got to bring that whole side up just a little bit, but get the jacks and see what we can do. That is not bad. So this end over here could still go, actually it's a little high. So this end could go up ever so slightly, but I think we'll check with Joe. If he wants it leveled out a little bit more, we are not far from it. So next step is to dive into the motor there and see if I can get that leveled out and uh, figure out what we need to do for the base. I'm getting these pulleys set up here. So I got this belt going back to the uh, extra pulley that came off the drive shaft or off the crankshaft rather. And then that's gonna come up here to another pulley and this pillow block, which will go up and run the fan. So these blocks here obviously are not how this is gonna be mounted. I'm just trying to figure out kind of where I want everything to land and what I want it to look like. Um, and then we'll get this pillow block set up so that it's pulling down and in line and centered with the uh, one above. And then we can adjust the fore and aft and tension to the one that goes to the crankshaft just by moving the stand on the platform a little bit. And once I get it where I want it, I can screw it down to the platform and it'll stay put. Uh, so it shouldn't be terribly difficult, just kind of a little fiddly and it's going to be some adjusting with this. and. Kind of figuring out exactly where it wants to sit. All right, I think that works. Had to put a little more tension on the belt down here. This one's a bit loose and it's flopping around. And the engine also isn't bolted down. It's got some movement on those motor mounts, but I think this is pretty good. To move, to tighten this, I just gotta undo, screw here and here, pull this back. It's just tacked on with those two right now. So, 
I think that that is a success. Woohoo! All right. Now I need Joe to come back here. Tomorrow's supposed to be warmer. He should be by. And uh, see if we can get this connected to the planner. But I think another part of the puzzle is more or less sorted. This is what I did yesterday in the freezing freaking cold. Yes. <laughs> Good. So I think the next real mission is to get that belt lined up. And it should be a lot easier now that all yeah. of that's bolted down and we're not tipping and cribbing and whatever yeah. else over. Okay. Well, if you want to do your thing on that side with the level and stuff and tell me where you want it, I can uh, shove this platform around. Yeah, now you got to come on the back. We had a pretty productive day today. Joe came over and he helped me get the motor moved around and the belt all hooked up. And then we had a little trouble getting the motor to start. One, we had a pretty dead battery. And then the second issue is one of the spark plug wires had kind of corroded through the coating and we we're getting a little bit of a short there. So we had to replace those wires, not a big deal. We pulled it out and got them isolated. And once we did that, fire right up. And we had success. We got the planer head to churn, and then we put the other belt on, and we got everything in the planer up and spinning and running. Clear. Clear. Gannon and Benjamin was using the planer not that long ago and said it was in full working order when they stopped using it. So we figured once we got the power source to it, there probably wouldn't really be much of anything other than putting sharp knives in it. And that seems to be the case. So we're gonna lube it up real well and put in some fresh sharp knives. And I think it's just about ready for a test drive. I gotta finish up the dust collection. Uh, I put a hole in the wall so that we can shoot it out there. We'll put a collection bin back there. And Gannon and Benjamin had given us the hood that they used. Um, so they had the dust collection coming out the top, so I put a flat, hard cap on that. And we'll put a hose coming out the side. And I also put a little window on it so that we can see if the chips are clogging up and what's going on in there. Hopefully, by the end of the day tomorrow, this thing will be ready to make some sawdust, which will be fantastic. Uh, the first big test for it is going to be the last oak plank and I'm really interested to see this go. It should just do it so much faster and so much easier than the Delta. We're just killing that poor little thicknesser, but that's what this thing was made to do. So this is the end of the planer that you're gonna be shoving the lumber into, and the motor and clutch are all the way over there, which are definitely well out of reach. So if something were to happen here, uh, there's no quick and easy way to shut that off. So that's why we put this post here and we're gonna mount a kill switch from here to the motor. Um, so if anything were to happen, you would just slap that, it would shut the motor off and everything would stop. And we also got a tachometer um, set up here. So we can see what RPMs are running, which is gonna be important because that's with the throttle on the engine. Uh, and it's also gonna give us a number of hours that it's been running. So that'll be really helpful for when we need to do oil changes and that kind of thing. Uh, and then the battery has got a little house down there. We got the fuel tank strapped down, we got the fuel pump mounted, and then we're starting to work on the dust collection here. So I'm just gonna build a plywood tube that connects from here to here, and we'll put a bin on the outside, and then I'm gonna probably purchase a hose that we can go from here over into the side of the collector. Um, but yeah, everything is working really well. Um, we got a few little fiddly tune-up things to do, play with some belts, put the air filter on. We got to uh, do something a little more extensive with the exhaust here. Um, but everything's working. The motor runs, drives the planer. Everything on the planer seems good. There's no real reason that uh, as soon as we put sharp knives in it and finish making the connections in the dust collector that this shouldn't work so hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to uh fire it up and see how it does i am very very excited i hope the crew down in costa rica is doing well and 
Hope they're having uh, nicer weather than we are. Today was like in the low 40s, and I don't even think it hit 40, maybe high 30s. It wasn't too bad. Um, definitely nicer than the uh, single digits we had the other morning, but kind of ready for spring. Not ready for the super heat yet, which is what they have down there, but I am ready for spring. So yesterday was super productive. We fabbed the kill switch. We did not fabricate the guards. We grounded the fuel pump. We just about finished the dust collection. We'll go take a little look at that and then I'll wrap that up. Knives are installed, exhaust is done, air filter is done. And right now I'm gonna go through and lube and cotton ball this thing up, which sounds odd, um, but what that is, is these guys. So these are Babbitt bearings. So there's a very soft metal in here and the shaft is hard and just runs in there and it'll eventually wear away that soft metal. So what you want is a bath of oil so that it actually rides on the oil and not on metal on metal. So we'll clean these out. We'll put a whole bunch of oil in there. We'll shove some cotton balls in and then we'll oil the top of the cotton balls. And then down the road, we can just add more oil to the cotton balls and it'll soak down in there onto the shaft uh, and it'll help keep the crud out. And eventually the cotton balls will get too gross. We'll just fish them out, clean it up, put some more oil in, put some more cotton balls in and keep jamming. But these are all over the machine. So there's some there. We got one here, you can see all the oil. And that's gonna be a problem because that's gonna fill all with um, sawdust and stuff and get sucked down in there and we don't want that. So we gotta make sure we get some cotton balls in there. They're up in the top and the whole machine's covered. Anywhere there's a bearing that's moving, it has a place to put in the lube. So back here is the dust collection. So I just built a plywood tube here that connects it over to the wall. And then on the back side here, We've got a box. It's not very big. I really wish it could be bigger, but we have great grandpa's pear tree here and we really don't want to cut that down. So we're trying to work around it as best we can. But the idea is chips will come charging out of that chute. And this is very important is we have a baffle here. And the reason for that is once I close up this panel, the air is going to have to come out, down, over, it's gonna come under the baffle and a lot of it's gonna exhaust up out of here. And there's cracks and other places where it'll go, but a good chunk's gonna to wanna to explode out that hole. And what it does is when that air dives and then rises, it loses a lot of momentum and it's gonna dump the chips. If we didn't have this, there's a chance that as soon as this starts to fill up a little bit, the air is just gonna come and whip the chips and blow the chips right out the exit hole as well. Which if this gets too full, they'll do, but the uh, baffle will go a long way towards stopping that. And then on the end here, we got given a handle and a bunch of doorknobs. So I kind of made a jerry rig cleat out of it here, but you can open up the door and I got to fix up that little red wagon. We got donated some tires for it. And uh, so I get those replaced and we can pull the wagon over here and just scrape out all of the chips. Now it's all set. So we've got a 1947 flathead Chrysler six cylinder running a 1800s industrial thickness planer and the chip sucked out by probably, I don't know, a 1960s, 1970s dust collector. So I think all we're missing is something from modern times and we got all the genres covered. 
but so far this thing runs great. Um, so let's fire it up and make some chips. One thing I learned today is I think the knives are set a little bit too high because we can't take a light cut. The feed rollers don't grab it. So I think we got the knives a little bit too tall, which is a pretty easy fix. And that's kind of the thing that we expect to do over the next week or so before the planking party is we're gonna run some oak through it. We get those knives adjusted. I gotta play with the pulleys on the other side for the dust collection to get those belts to stop flopping around so much and a couple other little things like that. But for the most part, Everything is working and operational, and it's just down to the nitty gritty little things, which are no big deal, but I am, I am quite happy. This is gonna make a huge difference. So thank you, Gannon and Benjamin, so much for the thickness there, and big thanks to Larry for the Flathead 6. Couldn't be doing it without you guys.